why can you not be undrafted rookie free agents? QBs. Because that's the second one. Who was the first one? The Broncos. Oh, God. Uh, third Allen, as yeah. I think it's called. Yeah. yeah. He didn't even start for the Broncos this week. I don't know if he's hurt or what, but Broncos beat the Chargers with some other dude. Yeah, so what is it about it that they're not ready? What's up, everybody? That's Kevin Conley. And that's Anthony Sellers. And this is Browns, Browns in Our Blood. Blood. That was a rough game. Mm-hmm. Man, so the Browns fall in Pittsburgh. So still no wins in Pittsburgh. I think there was a graphic saying it would be the first time that they swept Pittsburgh since like 98 or something like 88. that. 88. I'm sorry. See, this is why I um, am not a Browns fan. <laughs> um, among other things, uh, yeah, but they they take the L, uh, twenty to thirteen in Pittsburgh. Anthony, what were your takeaways from the game? You kind of just, uh, I I saw it implode. The implosion just kind of happened. Mm-hmm. Like you you got the sense at the end of the first half that they were uh, pressing a little bit because. They felt the momentum switching. Like, they had taken the wins out there in the first couple drives with the first 10 points. Mm-hmm. But then they don't get that, like, the end of the first half, they don't get a first down. They got three and out, and yeah, all of a sudden, Pittsburgh goes down the field with 30-yard bombs, just chucking up bombs and score. And, yeah, yeah you just, it was like, almost like they pressed a little bit. In which I don't mind trying to go for it and get points because, you know, Pittsburgh was coming out to get the ball to start the second half. Yeah. So, I don't mind that, personally. It was the way it went about, though. It's just, it something about it fell off. It was like, yeah. you know, it wasn't necessarily, hair, they, they weren't Hail Marys, but they were all deep routes where they forced it to, to o- Odell. They were trying to force it to Odell. Every one of those was an Odell deep ball. And... They the they were going the, for a dagger almost. Yeah, the use of the timeouts were, didn't was mean. off too. It seemed like the way mm. the way that they were split and spe- it just did it. None of it made sense to me. No, you know I, I like I I personally like the aggression factor. You know, try to get points to end it in the half. That that would have been great, even if it was just a field goal and be up thirteen ten. Yeah, but it just it just fell off the rails from there. It was like they were. They were inept for the rest of the game. For the rest of the game, and quite honestly, it's inexplicable. <laughs> like good word, vocab five. It just there it, you go. why why can you not be undrafted rookie free agents, QBs? Because that's the second one. Who was the first one? The Broncos. Oh God, uh, third Allen, as yeah. I think it's called. Yeah. yeah, he didn't even start for the Broncos this week. I don't know if he's hurt or what, but Broncos beat the Chargers with some other dude. Yeah, so what is it about it that they're not ready? The defense looked good in the first half, I thought. And in the second half, I mean, they gave up some deep some deep passes, obviously. But they pretty much held it together. It's but, like once they gave away that first deep pass, mm-hmm. it was like everything after that was just, they just fell apart. Yeah. There's no other way to explain it. It was, You know what it was almost like now I think about it? Do you think they went in too, much, too cocky? Possibly after what they did to them in Cleveland. No, because it started off hot. I mean, yeah. the first drive they took up half the quarter, only got a field goal. But they took up half the quarter, mm-hmm. and then the very next drive after that, it's a touchdown to to Kareem Hunt. So like they're up and they're up ten nothing. So it's like okay. So I, I just I don't get what happened after that. Like everything just they just fell off the rails. That's the only the only thing I can explain. And I actually woke up more pissed on Monday than I was when I left. My parents' house. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I can understand why because the Steelers made their halftime adjustments, and then there was just no answer for what the Steelers were doing on defense. And the Steelers' defense played out of their mind. The defense was way better than it was in the first matchup, in my opinion. Baker was hurried. He was pressured. He took uh, multiple sacks. So the Steelers' defense did its job. Yeah, you can tell that their defense feeds off of the fans. Mm. You can just you can tell they, they feed off of that. That's home, one of the things I hate about them. 
Yeah. You just hate, like, any team, really, but with the Steelers, when they're in that damn catch-up stadium, man, <laughs> like, when when the crowd's into it and those stupid towels start waving around and stuff, and the, they're feeding off of it, and you just feel the energy almost flowing onto the field from the fans, and they really that they really have always done that, and this is no exception, because the crowd was loud as hell, and you could, it came across on television, and they wanted... They wanted to beat the Browns after what happened a few weeks ago. And they, they just came out more inspired. And it's just frustrating because it's like to be an NFL team that makes the playoffs. When a team takes a step up against you, like the Steelers did in the second half defensively at least, you have to match that energy. And the Browns just stayed here and even here sometimes. So it was just, it, it was maddening. Baker's yeah. hand. Uh, what's the prognosis? Not nothing serious. I haven't looked. No, nah, not too serious. Nope. I mean, let, let's let's face it. Any professional quarterback who slams their hand off of a helmet in cold weather is going to be affected. Uh, Baker Mayfield's no exception. I don't care if Tom Brady's out there; he's going to be affected. Uh, so I feel like that had a factor in it. But again, Baker just had no time, and then the. If they feel like they were getting away from the running game to you. In the oh no, they half. did. They did. That was. An, I, I mean, was it was a close that game. Man. They had six or seven rushing attempts in but the second half or the fourth quarter. This, one of the two. But it has to be one of. It had, to, it had to be the second half, actually. Yeah. Like they just got away from it completely. So, yeah, and that's the pretty much the makeup of the team. Yeah. And I'm going to go into this too. Go ahead. Because spill the Chris, tea. Chris Smith was cut today. Mm-hmm. Like released. And then they signed someone up. Some, practice squad? Yeah, some tackle off of the practice squad of the Falcons. I don't like how Dorsey's running this roster. I just don't. Okay. It's gone. He's depleted depth. You're already thin at the defensive line, and then you release a guy who is a decent depth. But you think about training camp. Even right before training camp, you know, the start mm-hmm. of the year, we had Miles Garrett, Larry Ogunjobi. They signed Sheldon Richardson. You had Emmanuel Ogba. You had Jannard Avery, who was listed as a linebacker, but let's face it, he's an edge rusher. He's a rusher. He's mm-hmm. a pass rusher. Defensive line. Yeah. Then you had Chris Smith. And then you had Anthony Zettel. Who's left in that line now? You got Miles Garrett, who's suspended. Mm-hmm. You have Sheldon Richardson, because, you know, obviously they just Ogunjobi. signed him this year. And then Ogunjobi. Where no those other four names, five names or whatever, are not there. Like you created a hole, a huge hole in a spot that you don't need to have the hole. And then on top of that, the offensive line was terrible. You know the tackles. You mm. you ignore the tackles. Like they got outplayed. And then tell well, when they weren't getting beat by Dupree and T.J. Watt, the right right guard Teller was getting pushed back by Hargraves. Yeah. Like, it just broke down. It broke down. It's, like, every other, every couple of downs. Like, yeah. they'd have a decent throw down every field. Down. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, but Baker would have a, they get a first down, Baker throw a good play, a good pass, and they get some uh, yardage. And then next thing you know, Baker's, like, scrambling and throwing it away. And, like, he was running for his life out there. Yeah. And, I mean, you, you just... You can't have that in November and expect to make the playoffs. No. I mean, there's going to be elite defensive teams. But you have to be able to dig in. And it's like, let's get Baker some time on this one. There has to be these moments. And they just were no moments at all. No, no. And the team doesn't have depth anymore. Yeah. Well, the defensive side doesn't have depth anymore. The offensive line's always been, I've, I've always felt it's been kind of a weak link. Mm-hmm. But Yeah, you were, you were all about how much depth that you guys had last year. And it, and that worked because y'all were on the field so much yeah. uh, defensively that uh, having all that personnel was good. But I don't know. Maybe Dorsey's trying to like plug holes in the dam and stuff. I mean, mathematically, you guys aren't. Well, he, he he's he's plugging holes in the dam that he created. Yeah, the Browns fall five and seven. Steelers are seven and five. AFC North probably out of the question. Playoffs out of the question. It's. This season's a disappointment. I'm going there. This season is a disappointment. With with all the hype, the, the hype, of course, was unreal. It's most hyped-up season since before they announced the Browns were moving to Baltimore 
Am I crazy to say that? No. Because I feel like y'all had really good years in the mid-90s, and then as soon as that came out, the art was moving the team. It's like right down the drain, you know? Um, I mean, but there was a lot of excitement, a lot of big moves, and none of it has paid off on the field. Nope. Um, at least not the way that we, we thought it would. So, any... I... I I, I, I don't want to dwell on negative and yeah. keep this whole thing negative because yeah. I mean I've kind of we've done that enough now. Yeah, we, I mean, yeah, we yeah, have. It's, it's, we've done this for three years, so we've definitely been yeah, negative at it's times. Time, it's, yes, but you know it's just yeah. it's all right to say that this season's a disappointment. Yeah, in my in my mind, I'll I think it, it is. That. Yeah, yeah, just leave it at that. I do want to say one thing before you talk about the Bengals game. Uh, this might be Mike Tomlin's best coaching job, and I, I hate to give the Steelers credit for anything, but with the roster being the way it was. James Washington played out of his mind today. Um, the running back for the Steelers, uh, not uh, Benny Snell. Snell. Benny Snell was 63 yards, but he was carrying, I mean, it was 3.9 yards of carry. And every time I looked up, he was getting a big gain, it felt like. But Tomlin has a dude named Duck as a starting quarterback. And, I mean, I just want to give him his credit. I know it's a Brown show, but I feel like he's done a good job. I'm sorry. This is getting edited out. Bengals, next. Going back home, 1 p.m. game this Sunday. Bengals have Andy Dalton back, got their first win of the year. They're 1-11. Um, I mean, what you thinking? Are you, are you worried? Do you care at this point? Well, I, think, I know you care, I, I think they'll but bounce it's just back. rough. Yeah, I think they'll bounce back just because, you know, they'll be at home. I think they're 8-point favorites they right feel like, Yeah, they feel like they were a... Uh, they probably embarrassed themselves a little bit, mm-hmm. whether they admit it or not. I mean, that show it was pretty pathetic. Yeah, from that from the second quarter on, it was pretty bad. Um, Very but yeah, similar I think, to the first game of the year. I think too, like Cincinnati just does, like they don't have the kind of talent and stuff. Even though they played well and finally got a win, you know. It was against the Jets, mm-hmm. another bottom feeding team. Yeah, but you can't take away the fact that they actually did get a win and stuff. So bottom feeding team that beat the Raiders last week. Yeah, <laughs> but I think I think we'll bounce back, and I think that we'll see better better performances at least through the through o- Odell and Jarvis. Mm-hmm. I just don't know about that defensive line. I don't I I don't know what they're going to do about it. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's a, it's a real sore spot. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm I, I'm not really too worried about the Bengals. Uh, I think you guys will bounce back. Um, hopefully, hopefully it'll be a game where maybe y'all can get a big lead and then kind of rest some of your starters in the second half or something, kind of coast the rest of the way. I think you'll bounce back and it'll be a um, be a dub. I'm gonna go ahead and start predicting games again. So uh, there's a Fanduel league. <laughs> We had two. There's two, two fan two, two contests. contests this week. Thanksgiving Day and I didn't on realize Sunday. it was going to do that. Honestly, I can remember. I don't think it did it last week. No, last I, uh, no, last year I don't think it did. Mm-hmm. I, I don't remember doing that. There was a Thanksgiving contest. Uh, four of us entered. Uh, Monster Lung pulled it out. Eric Jordan's on IR, by the way. Yes. Uh, best wishes to you, Eric Jordan. Uh, he will be back soon. Nothing Hope serious, makes. folks. Hopes to be back soon. Uh, but he's on injured reserve right now. So uh, if you're wondering why I'm here again, messing things up and looking ahead. Um, <laughs> but Monson Long won the Thanksgiving. Uh, Anthony was in second right behind him. And then Gary was in third. And I had a poor showing because I started a Lions quarterback who wasn't even playing. Yep. So there was that. And Julio also ended up not doing anything. So I was awful that week. And then the Sunday. I think he was inactive, actually. Yeah. Let's see. I think, I think they wrote them out right at the end. I, yeah. I can't remember. But. This is what happens. I was eating turkey. I didn't care. Uh, and then on Sunday, Moslem won again. And then I came in second. I won $3.80. Finally. Fine. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And then Anthony was in third. So your leaderboard after all this time, not best five scores, total scores, Anthony is still in the lead. Moss Long's in second. I'm in fourth now because Gary has retaken me um, in third place. And that's your fan duel report. Good job, Gary. Cut Sorry. it. Cut him. Sorry, I had to do it. And yeah. 
had to do it. If uh, you want to play FanDuel with us, go to the link in the description and uh, check us out. There's six slots every week, so only two dollars to play. Um, come on in and uh, and see if you can beat us. It's too late to win the overall crown, uh, which uh, it's between uh, Anthony and Monster Long, Anthony and E, Anthony and Eric. <laughs> I'm using like everything we don't call on the show, Anthony and Eric. Uh, but you can join us and uh, see if you can be some fan duel, and it's a lot of fun. And then if we need more slots, we can open some up for you. Uh, you're watching this on Monster Lung Sound Vision. Uh, that's the YouTube channel you're on. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. We love the comments. Um, Eric will be in there still commenting. He can still do that. No worries there. Uh, so give us your feedback. Throw us your thoughts about the Steelers game. All or, that stuff. Or not. Or not. Talk about the Bengals game. <laughs> Don't look ahead because he doesn't like it. Anyway, <laughs> so if you hit that bell, then uh, you won't miss any uploads from us along Sound Vision, including Browns in Our Blood. And then if you like your uh, shows in podcast format and don't like looking at our mugs, ugly mugs, then you can go to hyphenpodcastgroup.com, a Morgantown, West Virginia-based podcast collective bringing great podcasts to the people, hyphenpodcastgroup.com. That's right. And I think that does it, man. So Browns lose, looking to bounce back against the Bengals. Um, disappointing yeah. season. We don't need to talk about the Raiders. The Raiders didn't even play on Sunday. The Chiefs did. The Raiders did not. All right. <laughs> All right. After guys. that awkward moment of silence. After that awkward moment of silence. That's Anthony Sellers. And that's Kellen Conley. And this is Browns, Browns in, in Our, our Blood. blood.